Hi, I am Dr. Gurkirat and I am here to introduce to you the concept of Orthoguru. I have been in education for more than 20 years and what I have realized is that once the lecture gets over, the student forgets everything. If not everything, he does try to recollect something but it is not enough for him to learn. And with this concept, we started this project where these lectures will be available to you all throughout on the net whenever you feel like getting and seeing them. This is a concept which is truly of the today's world. It is supposed to give you a hands-on experience and you will have the chance to maybe give us your feedback and interact with the so-called teachers on the net. And this concept is brought to you by orthoguru.com. It is a very small podium, it's a very small platform to begin something wherein we hope to impart education specially related to orthodontics, which is my field, which is the life that I live, it's orthodontist. This will be a series of lectures divided into a particular format, which is generally followed by all basic textbooks. And that is gonna impart a sequential order of lectures. And you can access them individually or as part of a package. And that is what we want you to do, is refer to them as and when you require to see or learn something more about a particular topic. They are topic based, you, have, you will have a directory of sorts which you can choose from and depending on the length and duration of the lecture, you will be charged. I think the concept is very innovative and I hope that people who are contributing to this will give a lot of chance and scope for the young students. Uh, introduction to orthodontics. See, we are going to start with a small concept and try to build it up with the word orthodontia. It is a combination of two Greek words meaning ortho, that means right, and dons mean teeth. And that is what it means, right set of teeth. But in the right alignment and stuff like that was added to it at a later stage. In 1911, Noels defined orthodontics as the study of the relation of the teeth to the development of the face and the correction of arrested and perverted development. We have to realize that he has used two, three words which are very pertinent. He's talking about the face, he's talking about development, and he's talking about correcting either the development or correcting what has gone wrong during the development. The next definition, which was, was widely provided, was provided by the British uh, Society of Orthodontia. And they proposed the definition which included Orthodontics includes the study of growth and development of the jaws and face, particularly the body generally, as influencing the position of the teeth, the study of the action and reaction of internal and external influences on the development and the prevention and correction of arrested and perverted development. So as you see, in the 40 years that elapsed between the two definitions, the concept evolved further and the face and the smile became the center around which the growth and development had to be churned around so that it was related to the jaws and the teeth. The ABO or the American Board of Orthodontics gave the next definition and they defined as this orthodontics as the specific area of dental practice that has in its responsibilities the study and supervision and its uh, supervision of the growth and development of the dentition and its related anatomy along with uh, anatomic structures from birth to dental maturity and influencing all uh, including all preventive and corrective procedures of dental irregularities requiring the repositioning of the teeth by function of mechanical means to establishing normal occlusion and pleasing uh, facial contours. So as you see, the development or the definition has evolved even further to involve the teeth as well as the surrounding structures. So the emphasis is also on contour in trying to prevent, in trying to study, and also to notice that things should not go wrong during the initial phases. And when things are at a mature stage, they should be further developed and it should look as if it is normal natural and harmonious to the face as well as to the smile. The next, next question that we need to answer is why should I study orthodontics? As a general dentist, as a student of dentistry, why should orthodontics be a subject of focus? 
Well, my dear friends, it is very important that unless the general dentist realizes at what stage the patient needs to be referred to an orthodontist or at what stage a preventive measure has to be instituted, I don't think that you have the right knowledge or the capability to treat orthodontic cases. And it is very important from a perspective of the patient that he is given the right options at the right time because growth, as you know, is irreversible. So it might not be the best thing for a general dentist not to study orthodontics in a greater detail. It is not that we are wanting you to do orthodontics, but we definitely want you to benefit the patient in the long run by diagnosing him at the right time, at the right age, and referring him for whatever treatment is required, orthodontic or otherwise, at that particular person requires at that stage of time. There are a lot of problems that are generally associated with growth. Today, children have a wide range of exposure from internet to television to uh, the, the phones and to the digital world. The world has become really, really small and they get influenced by their peer group more than their parents. And they trust also the judgment of their peers. So it is very important that before the child is teased for a malocclusion or a malalignment of his teeth, it is better to prevent psychological problems that he has the guidance and the attitude which is required by diagnosing him right and sending him to the consultant as desired. So basically there are three branches of orthodontia. That is preventive, interceptive and corrective. The preventive orthodontics basically deals with prevention of malocclusion and diagnosing it at what is normal for that particular age. Preventive orthodontics, as the name implies, is the action taken to preserve the integrity of what appears to be normal at occlusion at that particular specific period of time. And this is, my dear friends, why the study of growth and development is so very important. Unless you know what is normal for a particular age, you cannot diagnose and thus you are not able to prevent if something is actually going wrong for a patient. Interceptive orthodontics is that phase of the science and art of orthodontia which is employed to recognize and eliminate potential irregularities and malpositions in the developing dentofacial complex. So one was prevention and the other one is interception. Now we know that things are going wrong, so what are we going to do about it? Are we just going to sit tight and let them become worse? Or do we want to help the child in the manner so that he does not get into any psychological problems, he doesn't have any behavioral problems, he doesn't have any speech related problems and these by, by the word interception can be controlled or the irregularities that are developing in that occlusion can be controlled if we are able to actually go ahead and intercept the developing problem. So this is the phase of orthodontics that is extremely important and at times lesser strain has been provided on this. The corrective orthodontics recognizes the problem exists and definitely tries to correct it. Now there are lots of ways and means of going about correcting malocclusion but you have to realize that growth is at the fag end post the teen years and you have very limited scope of doing something related to growth after this particular age group. So it is very important that we are able to diagnose these things right and so to recapitulate I would suggest that there are three branches of orthodontia, the, in, the preventive, the interceptive and the corrective. The corrective lasts the longest and has now gone into where we can actually treat adults and do a lot of work uh, using various newer appliances which is very beneficial to the patient in the long run. But the preventive and the interceptive ones are the ones which actually should decrease the intensity of the malocclusion if not be able to prevent it completely. So what are the aims of orthodontics? Jackson was the person who summarized these aims and he divided them into functional efficiency, structural balance and aesthetic harmony. These are now famous as the Jackson stride or the aims of orthodontics. So functional efficiency, structural balance and aesthetic harmony. So what do we mean by functional efficiency? The teeth along with their surrounding structures are required to perform certain important functions. The orthodontic treatment should not only increase the efficiency of the functions performed but should have a harmony around them and this functional efficiency requires that all teeth be able to chew to masticate food to the best order 
and of course they should look aesthetic the structural balance is the the treatment should maintain the integrity or the balance between the structures that might be hard tissue or soft tissue the muscles or the bones or even the joint and the correction of one should not actually be detrimental to the health of the other what it generally means is that you should not actually do something like trying to, in trying to get the best smile it should not happen that it goes the best smile or the broader smile actually goes beyond the realms of biology and actually hampers the periodontium in certain manner thereby harming the gums or the harm in trying to get a better occlusion it should not happen that the joint is in some way damaged and it is not able to do its function so that is very important and last but not the least is the aesthetic harmony please realize that majority of your patients actually come to you for aesthetics because malaline teeth or protruding teeth actually do not give the best smile that a patient would be expecting but this is not the sole reason for doing do not try to forget that you have the structural balance and the functional efficiency to deal with along with this so like you have a good rolex watch which goes hand in hand that is how the three structures should go hand in hand the aesthetics the muscles and the bones so it is very important that you get all three of them right and the the jackson stride should be the aim of orthodontic treatment next thing is the scope of orthodontics orthodontic treatment is aimed at moving teeth achieving orthopedic change and altering the soft tissue envelope this has to be done together it has it is not a singular thing so don't expect that if you move teeth there will be no change in the smile there will be a change in the smile if you move jaws there will be change in the jaws as well as the musculature and it will affect the uh, it will affect the tmj or the joints that are involved in this so basically what are we capable of we are capable of changing profiles we are capable of giving you better smiles so what is an orthodontist capable of generally an orthodontist is required to come into the picture to change a smile it might be protruding teeth it might be the profile that is gone wrong because of this protrusion and an orthodontist gets either the teeth back and it can be uh, can be taken back or the lower jaw can be brought forward depending on the kind of condition that you have it is usually also the alignment of the teeth that he is required to correct these are certain small things that routinely orthodontist is associated with but what else is he capable of to a general dentist is that he is also able to create space he is able to redraw the space lines and redraw the map of the uh, teeth inside the oral cavity he is able to upright certain teeth he is able to align teeth of course and he is also able to help in the lining of the jaws so when we say recreate space this might be space which has been lost due to a, a loss of a, a extraction or a, a avulsion of a particular tooth traumatically or due to some pathology and then the space gets lost when the adjacent teeth come in and these teeth can regain the space it can regain the area that is coming generally sometimes when you have an avulsion or a tooth is lost because of a pathology or trauma over a period of time if this space is not maintained you have teeth which are bending into that space and this space gets decreased as in when the child or the person becomes conscious of this as a dentist you are expected to put a replace the tooth that has been lost unfortunately since there is a lack of space or there might be spacing that is created by the adjacent teeth tipping in this ideal size tooth cannot be replaced so an orthodontist is quite capable of redrawing the space mask and putting in enough space or creating that space by ways of orthodontic means or mechanical devices which can help recreate that space the parallelism of the roots is essential in today's world where implants are placed on a daily basis so it is very important the role that orthodontist plays in creating recreating that space the next thing that he can actually do is in case there is a lack of or there is spacing within the teeth we can adjust the teeth 
so that there is enough space or the space can be equally divided so that the proportions of these teeth that are built up at a later stage look natural and more pleasing to the aesthetic eye. The other thing that you would realize is that uprightening of teeth is sometimes required because of long drawn extractions or extractions that have been done much earlier which causes the teeth to again tip. The uprightening of teeth is a very major factor and this is very important specifically where you have impacted teeth which have caused or led to a root canal treatment in the sevens, specifically lower sevens. And that is where the third molar can be uprighted or if the third seven has been badly carious and cannot be restored, it can be very easily extracted. And the impacted dates are the ones that are usually can be uh, used for this. This helps not only in gaining space in other means, but it also helps in achieving the kind of uh, alignment or uh, number of teeth remain the same once the replacement has been prosthetically.